You can have one servlet finish running by starting another servlet, and it can send messages to that new servlet. Now, here's one that does that. This is the doGet method, which is the one called by the arrival of a get command. The request object that comes into this method has a set attribute method that you can use to store messages. Actually, they're more like properties. Each one of these attributes has a name and a string value. The name is used to name the message, and the string is the message itself. Now, we need to get a dispatcher to send the get command to the other servlet. That's done by calling the get servlet context method to get a servlet context object. A call is then made to get request dispatcher to get a request dispatcher object that can be used to issue a get command to a servlet named show message. Now, this is the method call that actually sends the message. Notice that it uses the same request and response objects that were sent into this method. These objects are now being sent to a new instance of the show message object. This is the servlet that receives the message and displays what it receives. The other servlet stored its message strings into the request object. And then it used that same request object to start this servlet. That is, this servlet receives everything the previous one did plus the messages. The calls to get attribute extracts the messages and stores them as local string objects. The rest of the page is the standard generation of HTML code for display. The out method of the original request object is used. The previous servlet could have actually started the page using this same out object and then let this one finish the job. That way, servlets can be made to work in a chain of two or three or more to create a web page. I'll have some more about grouping servlets in the next movie. Add these two servlets then to the web.xml file, compile them, create a new war file, and dispatch the war file to the server. Then you can address the first servlet. And that's what it looks like. This URL actually activated one servlet, which modified the contents of the request object and passed the job on to the second servlet for display. Now, the method call that starts the second servlet never returns. The first servlet just quits after issuing the command. Now, it's possible to have the first servlet take over again after the second one finishes, and I'll be showing you how that works in the next movie.